started 10 years ago. And uh, uh, basically my uh, HDL, uh, so I was already lean and I was exercising, right? Um, so my HDL uh, changed from 65 milligram per deciliter to 135, which I, I maintain now. My LDL didn't increase so much. So it's in the 90s. So my total cholesterol is probably around 240, 250, which is a flag on my, on my uh, lipid profile. But I have this astronomically high HDL and my triglycerides is in the 13, 40 milligram per deciliter. So I'm, I, I do uh, have, like I, I match your description of very low triglyceride, very high HDL, but still my LDL is not astronomically high. Where would you uh, put, <laughs> put me in your model? Well, so the very first thing I would ask you is, are you, uh, do you consume a lot of plants? Yes, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, my carbohydrates are green green leafy vegetables, and I don't track so much as you are doing. So I uh, and my fat are mostly olive oil, avocado, and nuts. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't do much. I'm Italian. I'm from South Italy. It's more like because of uh, Mediterranean. Style. Yes. It's yes. preference. I I absolutely I I love saturated fat. I think they are very healthy. Just like my my preference. So that's my diet. Okay. So the, so here's where it gets a little bit interesting and, uh, we're going to get a bit geeky again. <laughs> um, I used to think that this had more to do for those people who go more plant-based quote unquote keto that it had more to do with, um, more partitioning of the diet in mono and polyunsaturated fats. Uh, we, especially in the case of polyunsaturated fats, there are many mechanisms that can explain why LDL might be lower in that circumstance, right? Now, what's fascinating is uh, my colleague, Nick Norwitz, is also on a sort of Mediterranean style ketogenic diet, super, super lean, um, but his LDL is like super, super crazy high, right? However, a key difference is, is that he doesn't have a very high fiber in his diet. And I started then investigating. I was like, well, actually, you know, now that I'm talking to, and I was starting to ask more type one diabetics, do you have to dose for fiber? Cause who's better to, to get a sense of whether you need insulin to process, especially soluble, soluble fiber than people who can't make insulin. Right. And for type one diabetics, uh, there seemed to be a common theme that many of them would probably overall, it seemed like it was somewhere in the neighborhood of around 50%. So in a way, we can't really subtract fiber for everybody. For some, it's almost like a 50% insulinemic response uh, and possibly glycemic response. So I have set up, and I keep putting it off because I've just had too many responsibilities. I've set up a fiber experiment because that's specifically what I want to test. And it's very relevant to our model. And here's why. If fiber does in fact have a glycemic uh, response, but it's very moderate, then you're, you're not going, you're going to potentially keep the level of glycogen in the liver such that we don't see the other things I showed in my data just now, the lower relative uh, uh, leptin levels, cause it's hypoleptinemia that kind of activates it, gets the greater lipolysis going and so forth. And that's relevant because there may actually be less turnover of the triglycerides on the lipoprotein lipase. So this is why for a lot of people like yourself, I always posit this, but in a friendly way, I think if I had an Island Dave's Island where I could kidnap people who were like, Oh, I always have low LDL on keto. I'd be like, okay, but now you're going to go on Dave's high fat carnivore keto diet so that we ensure that not only are you like hundred percent fat adapted, cause you have no choice. Like there just can't be any fiber. There can't be any PUFA, whatever. Well, I mean, there'll be PUFA, but, but on top of that, um, we'll confirm this with the respiratory exchange ratio. I suspect people who have uh, more fiber in their diet, especially soluble fiber, may actually test higher on a respiratory exchange ratio than you might think. And, and for those who don't know, that actually is capturing uh, the carbon dioxide exchange to confirm how much you really are burning fat versus burning carbs. And what I suspect, it's a hypothesis, even if I've had a pretty good record up until this point, it's a hypothesis. 
I suspect lean mass hyperresponders in the aggregate will test the like very, very lowest on RER. And then a lot of people have a uh, lower LDL, but on some other kind of diet, even if it's presumed to be keto, will turn out to test slightly higher on RER. Um, we'll see. I don't know. That's interesting. So perhaps I may qualify for your fiber experiment then. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, it's not, it's not a clinical trial or anything like that. Yeah, but yes. <laughs> but yeah. Although then how would that explain my astronomically high HDL? And by the way, on a genetic level, that's interesting. According to my genetic profile, I'm predisposed to have low HDL. Yeah. Just to say, like, it, I mean, and I, I, I can, I can identify my blood lipid report among hundreds, and every time I go to my doctor, they say, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, the, the, I say this with love in my heart because I know a lot of people get very excited about the genetic testing, especially Mendelian randomizations. But it, as you may already know, because you're interested in this research, they're going by just the tiniest shifts, right? They're going, ah, this SNP is associated with this, like, you know, 7.5 milligram per deciliter difference in HDL, right? Whereas our work, and I don't, I don't mean this as a humble brag, but honestly, our, our work is identifying what I believe is hands down the most predominant influence on your lipid profile in a healthy metabolic setting. And the qualifier is important healthy metabolic setting. Cause if you, if you have an unhealthy metabolism as you know, we're, we're learning and still are all of the ways in which you could, for example, uh, damage your adipose tissue, um, you know, create insulin resistance you know, with hepatocytes, all of that sort of stuff. We're still learning that. So that's obviously a big bucket category, but as I get very vocal about doing, as you know, if you follow me on social media, we really need to be putting more research into just studying healthy people, period full stop. It's crazy how much we extrapolate from ill populations toward healthy populations. If we had more research on that, it would actually help us with the ill populations as well as the healthy populations. Yes. So. More research in healthy population and with specific diets. We have very yes. little research on, on keto and some of the conclusions from studies done with diets that are high in fat and high in carbohydrates, which are by the way, called obesogenic high fat diets are extrapolated and applied to ketogenic diets, whereas the, the effects of ketogenic diets are, are diametrically opposite to those of obesogenic high fat diets. Anyway, um, okay, so perhaps I, will, I may qualify for your fiber study, not for the lean mass uh, hyper responder study. Very sad about that. If you think uh, about that and then think I, I may fit uh, anyway, because my, my, my cholesterol is very high. I don't know whether in your model, I need to rewatch your slides. I may have a higher turnover of VLDL to HDL. Why? So I, think I, you, I think you definitely have a high turnover. So, so, yeah. and, and this, this is, this is you regardless of what diet you're on, right? So if you're, if somebody is on a high carb, low fat diet, but they have high relative HDL and low triglycerides, I take from that, that they do have higher turnover of triglyceride rich lipoproteins, which is why it tends to associate with good metabolic health, right? The, the, the harder question to answer is the removal of LDL from things unrelated to being fat adapted, which is why I always put things in that context of all else being equal, et cetera, right? So for example, and I'm just gonna go through a quick list here, with polyunsaturated fats, there are multiple things that can explain why it would be lower one is that uh, there's a higher preference in hepatocytes towards ketogenesis. There's more that heads in the direction of ketogenesis. And actually a lot of that is hypothetically because um, it uh, doesn't package as well in lipoproteins at a certain threshold level, which makes sense if you learn about how, how fatty acids are. Uh, polys are very hingy, if you will. So they tend to be a little bit more, um, as Ken Sakaris would put it, floppy. So they're not good for making those same structures I had in my presentation, right? Um, so there's also, there's even literally a kind of defect process that uh, Siobhan goes into in one of her papers. But there's another factor, which is that they're also more prone to be oxidized in the bloodstream. 
Uh, because of that, they're going to be more likely to get removed by scavenger receptors sooner. Um, there's and there's even been talk and research about doing that by design, like ox oxidizing LDL particles so that they'll get removed at a faster rate so that there's less of them remaining in the bloodstream. I don't know that I think that that's necessarily a good idea specifically, um, but all of these things kind of play a larger part into the detected levels. Here's, here's the key thing I just want to just say for anybody looking at cholesterol, please don't try to find the one thing that you think are the cliff's notes to explain why you have the detected LDL levels, because what you're really doing with a blood test on lipids is you're, it's like getting a picture from traffic from a helicopter. It does not tell you enough as to why certain trucks are on the road or why certain cars are on the road and so forth. What the model helps do is it helps explain a large portion of the traffic uh, patterns, particularly why some people see this hyper response when they go keto but while also acknowledging there's all these other influences. And that's why we need controlled experiments like the kinds I'm doing all the time to really isolate away all of those other aspects, if that makes sense.